Veerabhadra temple in Depakshi. Mm -hmm. This is like a fully immersive experience. This is a startup called Who We Are. And they have built a AI Acharya, mm -hmm. which is trained on the Vedas. Okay. So it's like a small language model. Role play as either the, from the Pandava side or from the Kaurava side. Okay. And then you're going like a dice game, uh -huh. going on each of these places. When, so it's a training about the future, but it's Indic heritage inspired, like Bangalore in the future. Namaskar. Welcome to Plight Sambhad brought to you by the Hindu Temple of Scotland. Today, we are celebrating a milestone that the Plight Sambhad has achieved. It's the 50th episode, but just before going forward, I would like to know the experience of the person with whom we started. The temple gave us the opportunity to do a talk where we explored the ideas. Srivasji, how has your experience been with the past 49 episodes? Uh, Namaskar to all. When we started this, we were thinking about it more as an interaction that the two of us would have, uh, talking about exploring particular aspects of the temple rituals. Because we got this idea from the fact that we were doing some of the sloka classes at the temple. And then we, as an extension to that, we realized that there's the interest among the younger generation, which is growing up in Scotland to be exposed to some of the things that happens in the temple because they were very curious to know why I do X thing or why the other priest is doing something. So we said like, okay, there's a natural curiosity that the younger generation is having with regard to understanding why we do what we do at the temple. And we thought this would be a good opportunity for us to just talk about it. Some of them said we cannot come to the temple on every Sunday. So it's like, why don't we put it out as a, a podcast so that they can consume it whenever they can consume it. So that's where the trigger came. But I think over the 49 episodes, I think this transitioned quite a lot. Initially, we thought it would just be the two of us who sort of just jabbing something out. Uh, but we had interest from the community saying, we know about this, uh, uh, this particular topic. We have read about it. Why don't we are happy to come on board and stuff. So that's when the tagline of like some other came, yeah. which was Swadhyaya Pravachanicha, which means self-learning and discussing about it. And so then it became a platform where the local community, we have not had any sort of religious expert, theology, PhD people on our uh, communication or discussions over the 49 episodes. It's been people from the local community, they knew about particular aspects, either it's from the music, either it is from dance, or it's from temple related aspects, history of certain temples, or particular rituals. So it's been, aspects which each of them had some knowledge of and experience about and they were happy to come and share about it and that's how for me the journey of the 49 episodes have been uh, enriching personally because either of us have been posting most of these episodes so through that we were able to uh, gain new knowledge which we didn't know about so i think it's been quite an enriching experience going through the 49 episodes so far Absolutely, I totally agree to it. And for those who don't know, actually, the way we started uh, talking to each other, so I started visiting the temple, and then he came to know that I'm from the northern region of the India, and he's from the southern region. And how I saw rituals and different, you know, like kind of mindsets I have, or the knowledge of the things that happened in that region was way different from that. And then we explored the ideas, and then we said, why not put these all talks that we used to do after the puja in the temple? into the recording so that other people can explore these things, right? And my experience has been exactly similar, exploring ideas, meeting new people, knowing about things which never even have heard of. That was such an amazing journey. But today, as we have the 50th episode, equally special is the venue where we are. Today's sponsor, DGAI Ven, an immersive experience that we have of the, you can see the screens over here. This is beyond the perception that we have. The last time we came to the venue, it just took us two hours just to explore the venue and we could not record a thing here. So thank you so much DG AI Ven for sponsoring us and giving us an opportunity to be here. So today Shrivasji, what is this 50th episode special, the thing that we're going to discuss about? What is it for our audience? Given the digital immersive experience that we are in, uh, we were thinking what best is the topic that links best to the digital immersive experience. And then the natural thought that came to us was what is happening in the digital world linked to Indian heritage. 
And there, uh, through some of my own research, I've been exploring a lot of startups that have come up, especially in the last uh, few years, since COVID, most predominantly, which are all either using the emerging technologies in some way with cultural heritage, and then there are also other startups which are going and, and exploring the shastras and bringing the traditional knowledge to the modern world. So that link between history and modernity, when we are in a digital immersive modern world, yeah. is what we thought we will explore in today's episode. So let's get into the journey then. Yeah, absolutely. Shrivasji, so how did you get started into the journey of this exploration of, you know, like the artificial intelligence science and this new technology with the Indian cultural heritage? A very interesting question. In fact, the answer to the question has the roots in Clyde Sambada itself. Oh. And which is why I thought it was apt that we kind of bring back an episode which led to me starting exploring this. Mm -hmm. So I think it was one of those initial episodes, I think episode 12, where we talked about a bit around how AI is coming into cultural heritage. Alongside that Clyde Sambada episode, I also wrote up a blog talking about it. That blog had quite a good reach across globally as well as in the Indian entrepreneurial audience. Okay. And then I got people from within that startup community reaching out and saying, read the blog, we would like to know more about what you're doing and stuff. So because I was naturally talking to these people, mm -hmm. that's a, there's an interesting new space that is emerging. And given my research that is around entrepreneurship from a business school hat, that's what, that's my full time hat. Right? Yeah. So given I was doing that in my day job, I was seeing a nice intersection of me being able to link what I do with Clyde Samvada and the temple mm -hmm. with what I do in the day job by looking at the Indic heritage inspired cultural entrepreneurship. So that's how I got introduced to this and Clyde Samvada had a role in me going down that direction. So, but I also remember, I think so once you showed me a chat GPT around yeah. something like, you know, like some of the entrepreneurs, I'm not sure if it is yet public open, but I've tried that and it was really, really good. Yeah. No matter what question you throw at them from the Vedas or anything, they have references, what's written, how many things are there, because every question, as they say, you know, they have multiple answers. Yes. That's where you enter that world and you have multiple answers and it was amazing. So in your journey, because it's been like a long time, uh, you know, we never discussed about these things. So which was the first one or would you like to take us through a journey of starting from where we start and take us to a deeper? So because you took that example, I start from that startup itself. Uh, that's a startup called Moksh. Okay. And they have built a AI Acharya, mm -hmm. which is trained on the Vedas. Okay. So it's like a small language model. So what you see as open uh, sort of open AI models or Lama models, they are all large language models, mm -hmm. which is trained on the entire internet as the basis of the information that goes into the model. Small language models are trained on subsets of information. And in this case, they are training it on the Vedas itself. Mm -hmm. So they got information of translations of the Vedas because this has to happen in English, right? These Absolutely. models are, are getting trained in English, right? So they got translations of it, including uh, the meaning behind the Vedas. They got all that information, trained the model on it. And then what you saw was the chat GPT type interface. Mm -hmm. When we can ask them questions on what does the Vedas say about climate change yes. or something, it gives you answers on like from this Veda, this is what it says. The other Veda tells about this thing. And at the end, it also had an interesting uh, perspective that the AI itself brought, mm. which was the aggregation of information from across the different sources. Yeah. So it had its own voice. It's a SAR. Like yeah, it had its own voice, but it also had exact references of, of where it was from all the other places. So that was one interesting AI-based application that we were seeing. Mm -hmm. The other example which really caught my attention was the metaverse world. Let's see what it was, please. Uh, and then it will kind of tell us how it plays out. This is the example of the Lepakshi temple, Virabhadra temple in Lepakshi. Mm -hmm. This is like a fully immersive experience. It's a startup called Who We Are. So the title itself is Who We Are. Who we are. It's like Who We Are. Like it's We Are, right? So mm -hmm. good play of words in how we have done it. Uh, so this is like full immersive experience of the temple. You kind of go in into the temple, see 
like the steps leading up into it, going all the way up to the uh, Sanctum Santorum itself and have like a description of what's the temple. So this we are now seeing it on a screen, mm. but imagine seeing it on a headset, right? So yeah, then you, you are like, like in, you feel like you are actually temple. in the yeah. temple, yeah. Uh, right? So this is like the Shiva, uh, this thing and stuff, right? So this is one of the really good applications of how the emerging tech around uh, metaverse or immersive experience is, is playing out in the Indian startup world. Not just this, they also uh, have a, you know, with Shada Peet, which is in the Pakistan occupied Kashmir. So it's an area which has got damaged and, and it's in the sort of border Not area under dispute all yeah. of it. What they have done is they have taken texts of Skanda Quran and others which had descriptions about this place. Ah. Okay. And then they got a expert who is an expert in drawing things out of the text in Puranas. The description, the description yeah. of the Puranas. He drew it out. Mm. Not, so that is just 2D. Mm. Now how do you bring it to the 3D world? 3D world. And then the same reference had some description around things like uh, the, the idol was made out of a particular type of willow which is found in Kashmir and all of it. So they went and looked at the color coding of that and then brought that into the imagery mm. and the 3D modeling was that. Okay. So now you can go and sort of at least visually visit a place mm. which otherwise you would not be able to see it, right? Absolutely. So this is now allowing us to go back to heritage mm. which currently we don't have access to. Yeah. So that I thought is a really, really powerful immersive experience of what we are as a technology could uh, bring. You know, this has given me like an idea of the way how Divya Drishti used to work, you know? Yeah, like people used to get blessed, okay, this happened. Oh, hey Prabhu, how do I know this happened? And then like, shh, and there you go, and exactly. you see things, you know? Exactly. It's similar to that, you know? Exactly, exactly. And, and then the a similar application is again in AI, where like, if you look at uh, what Brihat does, mm -hmm. uh, they do workshops, AI workshops in universities. And they are getting the students to think about what will the future look like. So they are like future envisioning workshops, but then it's also an AI training workshop. So they are getting students to think about futures mm -hmm. by thinking about it from an AI based image creation standpoint. So it's like prompt engineering mm -hmm. type workshop, but in the heritage inspired. Okay. So you look, this is Naimi Sharanya. Naimi Sharanya is from the uh, uh, third century or, or third Manmantara. Mm -hmm. You're kind of trying to go back to the past mm -hmm. and then look at the past through visualizations. So you're kind of connecting with the past that way. Mm -hmm. Not just the past, they're also doing the future version of it where they are thinking, getting the students to think about what will the future look like given how technology is going mm -hmm. and then getting them to think about visualizations of the future. So it's a training about the future, but it's in the heritage inspired, like Bangalore in the future, for instance, right? So yeah. you have sort of temples alongside your high flying uh, stuff. Yeah, so, this is yeah. this is also an example of as we now we have you know like IT hubs within the cities, you know, where you enter and everything is a skyscraper. So obviously, you know, as how people get more connected to the heritage, and as you said that from the Puranas, they got the description of the temple. Now you know governments or whoever is. In ready to invest such a money, they can rebuild cities and cities like that. Exactly, you know? exactly. So, so this is allowing us to now reconnect with the heritage in a way that we have not been able to do in the past, and that I thought is a really powerful way of how we are building the past to the current and the future. Mm -hmm. So that is a category of emerging technology-based ventures which have been quite interesting for me to uh, talk to and understand what is going around with what they have. The other category of what I was seeing is how are we engaging with the kids? Okay. Some of it will be this AR, VR type experience, but how can we also engage with them in a non-digital world? Mm -hmm. okay. And there we are seeing board games okay. coming up for instance. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, Sutadar and they have created a Kurukshetra based board game. It's called Run Bhumi. So, I, in fact, got the game when I was in India recently and played it out. Okay. Uh, so that I, I kind of have a real experience of how they have. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is sort of like uh, the image, right? So mm -hmm. what you have over here is like same like what you will see in a snake and ladder type game, mm -hmm. right? So it's like going from one to hundred. Yeah. But you have battlefields in between. Okay. 
Okay. Uh -huh. One battlefield is the Kurukshetra battlefield. Uh -huh. The other battlefield is the Pandava battlefield. Okay. Depending on which of the places you are in, you oh, so, you so red is red is uh, red. I think was uh, Pandavas, and then the green was the Kauravas. Okay. And then you role play as either the, from the Pandava side or from the Kaurava side. Okay. And then you're going like a dice game, uh -huh. going on each of these places. Whenever you are in an enemy camp, uh -huh. you are doing a battle. Okay. If you are in home camp, uh -huh. then you are safe. Okay. Okay. And then if you are home camp, you also get a, get a boost. Okay. Like if you are in this home camp, you can automatically go to this camp. Uh -huh. Things like that. Right. So uh, this this is like an extremely interesting way of. Thinking about Kurukshetra as a war, mm. but thinking about the stories behind it along with it. Yeah. The biggest highlight for me was they have these Astra cards, okay. weapon cards. Yes. So when you go into battle in any of these locations, yes. I you use, you, it's yeah. like your thumb card, like you would have played these board games, right? Mm -hmm. So when you have Monopoly or something, you have like a go to jail card mm. or you have like a card which can help you build something. Yeah. So inspired by a similar concept, you have an Astra card. Mm. And for that, I think they have done a lot of research. So it's like you have your your commonly known astras like Brahmastra and all mm -hmm. of it. And then there were a lot of these little known astras. I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't even know there was an astra by that name. Mm -hmm. So depending on the names of the astra, you have different levels. Certain level of astra is like lower powerful one, mm -hmm. middle powerful one, higher powerful one. And then you have counter weapons to it. Obviously. You use this weapon, That's you can counter by another one. one. If it's the same level one one, okay. then it's like neutralized. Yeah. If you have powerful one, then, then it's like more powerful. So really interesting conceptualization, well designed in terms of how it looks okay. and then inspired by all of this. So it's a very powerful storytelling mechanism mm -hmm. and not just a gaming uh, mechanism. So you get to know what the Astras are, you get to know uh, different armies within the Pandavas and the Kauravas. You kind of talk like the, when you go to specific locations, like specific wars, mm -hmm. like when you are in this location, it's like this day of the war mm. and this is what happened on that day of the war mm. things like that right so it's a really really powerful way about storytelling mm. alongside playing it so this is another startup which which was quite an interesting one that so just came up play and boomy is the name of the startup yeah no it's it's called sutradhar okay, sutradhar uh -huh. okay ranbhumi is the name of the game okay. ranbhumi kurukshetra is okay. the name of the game okay so that's that's uh, this game mm. uh, and then if you pull up the first one you would have, you have you heard like you would have read comics, right? Yes, I did. When you say comics, what name comes to your mind most commonly as Spider-Man, Superman? Superman that's like, that's the global one. Yeah. Indian one. Indian one. Not many, but uh, I think. Amachitra Katha maybe. Yeah, th those are the Punch, Punch Tantra Katha. Punch Tantra, Amachitra yeah. Katha, Jata Kate. Mm. What these folks are doing is comics, but they are taking very much regional type mm. heroes, mm -hmm. which we don't have as graphic commerce or haven't even heard about them in, in a good number of cases, right? Mm -hmm. So, Kambal, Kampaladana, mm -hmm. it's probably a folk hero. Mm -hmm. Kaipura Tampan mm -hmm. is a very local regional hero in Kerala, for instance. Mm -hmm. And they have one on Mukambiga Devi, mm -hmm. uh, which is a temple in Mangalore. Yeah. So, all these... There's a guy known, very well known. Yeah. But, but, yeah. But, so, it's like the, mm -hmm. the lesser known stories, visualizing them, getting them into graphic novels, and that's the way you engage with uh, yeah, the current audience, right? So yeah. engage with them in a non-digital world. So mm -hmm. in digital world, you have the virtual immersive experience on the AIs of the stuff. Mm -hmm. In non-virtual world, you have these ones to uh, go to. So these are some of the things that, that have been picking up from the, the world of how do you engage with the current world mm -hmm. in a newer ways. The third category of ventures that I'm seeing is the ones which are using the Shastras mm -hmm. and then using it in corporate settings for instance okay. so i'm sure you would have heard about like bhagavad gita in management and that's that's the, right? that's the maximum that's, that's yeah. the maximum that you would have heard right yeah. i also like okay it's probably that is what is happening yeah. but i was surprised that that is not all that was happening there was a lot more that's happening mm -hmm. for example uh, there is one which is natya sastra that is dance yes and then there's a startup called dancing tales and what they do is they're trying to incorporate insights from Natya Shastra into corporate settings, using it for things like negotiation, conflict management, understanding body language, all of those things. Mm. And then there was another one which was using Nyaya Shastra, which is law. Yeah. Okay. And the interesting thing for me there was Jataka Tales, which mm. is a story, mm -hmm. which kind of, it's a, it's a folk story when you read it. Absolutely. Like it's like crow, jackal, mm -hmm. all of it. Mm -hmm. But apparently there are deeper 
legal aspects into it and there's this person called Bharat Das uh, uh, he also worked very closely with the Indian knowledge systems group Bharat Das ji was like saying like I go to all these corporate settings talk about Jataka tale stories mm -hmm. and then from that build legal insights of it, 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 it's in law schools right he goes in law schools use Jataka tales to think about uh, ethics yeah. uh, think about uh, what side should you think about in terms of negotiation conflict management all mm -hmm. of those things so that was interesting and Atta Shastra because it is management linked yes. it's had it has had some exposure to corporate settings already yeah and that's because I think so, so Chanakya is very much you know like read and because he yeah. made Chandragut Maurya himself you know Absolutely. from scratch that's Absolutely. why he is taught that because the teachings what we know is all from the movies yes. shows episodes yes. I've read like though Chanakya like a lot um, but at the end of the day, you know, as you are saying, if somebody who ha is an expert in the industry, their perspective comes from experience as well. Absolutely. Right? So knowledge plus experience makes up your beliefs. That's like the thing. Absolutely. So so they are in fact like looking at Atta Shastra, which talks about administration and wealth management and then using it in corporate settings. So these are different ways by which you are contemporizing the tradition mm -hmm. and then linking it to the modern world is from a technology side or from a graphic storytelling game style or using it in corporate settings or institutional settings. So these I thought were interesting startups that are coming up linking the two worlds mm -hmm. and that's that's been quite an interesting journey to learn about them and what's going on. Yeah so also you know this has just given me like a, a, an idea in my mind you know or just thought came like how in today's radio show you know, yeah. we were talking about like how the researchers that time there were the Rishi Munis, you know, yeah. people used to go to them with their problems and they used to give them some solutions and how in today's world all these, you know, like the engineers or the top notch people, researchers, they're working on these technologies, making normal people life easier, yeah. you know, helping us connect with the roots, helping us know who we are as you, you know, who yeah. we are, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> like similar to that, but um, it was um, such an interesting episode, I think so, you know, and it, I'm so pleased to know about these all startups yeah. and uh, hopefully whenever I travel back and uh, I will tell more people about them because most probably people don't even know these. Yeah, I, think, I think like if you think about where these startups are struggling, mm -hmm. are one, because uh, to a large extent, we have in, in our effort to be modern or, or in our effort to be relevant in a contemporary world, we have somehow lost the connect. When I say we, I'm saying Indians at large, right? So including me, I'm saying uh, partly decolonization effects, I mean like colonial history mm -hmm. effects, partly how our mainstream education is, because this is, these are not parts of mainstream education, right? So in all of those things, I think we have sort of disconnected with some of those things. And it's a struggle for these startups because the, the, the customers are not naturally having an appetite to Absolutely. buy and consume these things. So I think okay. it's, it's through podcasts like this and through other ways of talking about it that we need people to see that okay, there's, there's this happening. It's not just about what happens in the past. Mm. It has relevance and importance in the contemporary world. And these are ways by which they make sense in the contemporary world. So I think that part of the communication side of it needs to happen a lot more in this space. I do believe uh, exactly the same and I believe these uh, startups hopefully you know th like our episode and more of the such content Absolutely. reaches to the wider audience you should know how these things work it's not like we're telling you you know like you should just yeah. go to the uh, like the pre uh, historic era where history was not a you know like so it has you yeah. reach but there is always learning from the history as in history repeats itself as yeah. they say maybe not in the same manner but the learnings never change Absolutely. and with that uh, we come to our episode the 50th special episode thank you so much uh, Srivasji for giving us such an insight uh, such a beautiful thank you and shout out to again DGI Ven for giving us an immersive experience Absolutely. of the for the first time I'm doing this, yes. like, like all of this on, on a live. We had just this. such an yeah. upgrade from, you know, our basic setup to yeah. fully yeah. AI kind of setup. Yeah. And thank you so much. Namaskaram. And we will tune back in. Namaste.